Hello, YouTube gardeners. It's another beautiful day in Southern California. And today I am transplanting more tomato plants into their permanent locations. While Jet digs for some more baby lizards, he's ripping up all of my little seedlings. Jet. Look at, I've got all of these. <laughs> hey, get out of there, dude. Got all of these little baby lettuce and arugula popping up that seeded themselves. But there's plenty around, so he can't disturb at all. All right, so this is part three in planting and growing big peppers, chilies, and tomatoes. And this variety that I'm about to get into this container is a husky, and man, are they heavy producers. They're nice, sturdy, beautiful plants, and they produce hundreds of large cherry tomatoes. I'll attach a video of a husky plant from a couple of years ago at the end of this video. You could see it got just so huge, and it was producing all the way into I believe early December, at least late November. So it's definitely one of those varieties that I love and I'm gonna grow every year. As a matter of fact, these five right here are baby huskies and they'll be getting in the ground in a couple weeks. I'm really excited to try this variety. This is a new one for me. And here is the seed packet information, Tasmanian chocolate. The name was so cute, it caught my attention. So I'm really excited to see how these guys do. Jet's got some pollen on his back. Jet, you're cracking me up. All right, so in part one, I mentioned that one of the things we do is pick varieties that grow big peppers, chilies, and tomatoes. And then in part two, it was about transplanting the seedlings into larger containers and then adding some uh, powdered eggshells to the soil and then getting them fed with a worm tea and now for part three I'm going to be getting these guys into their permanent locations I'm going to be adding some Dr. Earth fertilizer to the soil it's high in calcium which is very important for the cell wall development are you sure there's something in there buddy you're gonna wreck my garden mister and then I'm also going to be pinching off the blossoms just to help them establish well so that their energy isn't in making fruit right now I want their energy to be focused on root development all right so I'm gonna get this guy in this container I'm gonna add the dr. earth fertilizer I'm gonna get him buried about halfway down and I'm gonna pinch off those blossoms. And then when we get our peppers in their permanent locations, I'll be pinching off the blossoms and the fruit for probably a good few weeks. Tomato plants are so hardy, it may not be necessary to do that, but we definitely do that with our peppers and chilies. I got some Edna's Best here because I still can't find the Dr. Earth, which I really loved using but this Edna's Best is really great too. I just took this pile out of the bag. You can see here it had some moisture in it and we got some beautiful little earthworms. And I'm going to add some compost. This is the brand I use when I'm in between my homemade compost. And I'm going to get in some Dr. Earth fertilizer. It's a 463 and it is high in calcium. So even though I'm putting in my own calcium, there we are, seven and a half. So we got the 463 and a seven and a half. The girls bless us with all these delicious organic eggs and we might as well also use the eggshells. So 
I'm going to add a couple of handfuls of this and then also add the powdered eggshells. Get it blended really, really well and then get the husky tomato in its container. Here's the world's cutest shovel. I love this shovel. My mom got it for me. I just love it. It's perfect for blending these small batches. This beautiful plant is in its permanent location. I'm going to get these flowers pinched off. And I have another husky that I'm going to get in another container on the opposite side of this. And it has the same blossom starting. I'm going to leave those and do an experiment and see if it affects the establishing of a tomato plant. I know for peppers and chili plants, that it's a really good idea to pinch off the fruit in the early stages of the plant's growth. Tomato plants may be much more hardy and it may not affect them as well, but I'm gonna do a little experiment. So pinching off the fruit of this husky and then gonna leave the fruit on the other husky. When we plant our tomato plants into their permanent growing location, we plant the plant pretty deep down into the soil. This one could have went deeper, but it's in a smaller container, so it wasn't able to go as deep as I would have liked. But I got more than a quarter of the plant down into the soil, and a lot of times I bury almost half the plant, maybe even a little more, down into the soil. You could do this with tomato plants. I'm sure as you know, these little hairs on the side of the stems grow roots. But pepper plants and chili plants are different. So when we get those planted into their permanent growing location, we keep them planted at the soil level that they grew in, in their container. So I see a lot of unhealthy leaves. So now that this guy is planted, it's got lots of food, I gave it a deep water, I'm just gonna go through here and do a little maintenance and clip out some of the little stems where they have discolored leaves, just in case there's something starting I'm going to get these guys removed and thrown away so that it has its best chance at being a healthy plant from the very beginning. And another part of growing big peppers, chilies, and tomatoes is making sure that we plant them in a very, very sunny location. Tomatoes love the heat, they love the sun, and so do peppers and chilies. So even though this one's shaded right here, it's late in the day, it gets sun all day long. So this is a great location for this tomato plant. Jet, hey buddy, I love you. He's on the hunt again. So the last thing to do is to get this guy a deep, deep water. And here is the other husky that I need to get into this container. And this is the one that I'm going to leave the flowers on. So I'm going to get it planted and not prune away the new blossoms and see how it establishes. I have a feeling that it's going to establish fine just like the other ones, but the peppers and chilies are a different story for us. All right, so over here is the first group of green chilies that we've got into our raised beds. And when we planted these guys into their permanent locations, we just planted them at the soil level that they were growing in in their containers. So we didn't bury them whatsoever like we do with the tomato plants. And we used the same soil mixture that we shared a little bit ago earlier in the clip. So as I mentioned earlier, one of the important steps that we do in growing big chilies and peppers 
is when the plant's young like it is right now, I come in and pinch off all of the blossom growth, all of the fruit growth, because I want the plant to focus on root development and not using its energy on growing peppers and chilies. I want the plant to use its energy on developing a really great root system. And then once the plant's nice and established, quite a bit bigger, then I'll let the blossoms go and go for the first round of peppers and chilies. Oh, this is not good. So in uh, planting these guys just at container level, I noticed here that there's some roots showing. So I'm gonna have to get this guy a little deeper. And you can see here on the ground, here are some of the blossoms that I've already removed. And I'll just continue to go through here and remove the blossoms until these beautiful guys are nice and established. It's taken me quite a bit longer to get this video posted because I had a couple of back-to-back -back work trips, then I got home and got so sick. You could see here, here are some of the first tomato plants that I got in their permanent locations. They're looking beautiful. This beauty is a blueberry, and so from here on out, it's gonna be all about taking care of the tomato plants, making sure they stay healthy. So part four is gonna be what I do to care for them, for instance, one of the things is I'll be cutting off all of the lower branches of the tomato plants so that disease uh, bacteria from the soil doesn't start getting up on the plant and spreading. And here's the last group of peppers and chilies. These guys will be ready to get in their permanent locations in a couple of weeks. And then after that, it's just going to be making sure that the plants stay healthy so that we can get some nice big peppers, chilies, and tomatoes this year. So stay tuned for part four. All right, that's it for now. Enjoy your week and enjoy your garden.